that's the best way. I think it's the best way to get better, to improve your confidence, your competence at any technique like dry needling. Practice, practice, practice. I am going to be talking through this procedure. I'm going to be dry needling my quads for specific knee pain. I am not teaching. I am not teaching. I am not teaching. I am talking out loud to remind myself of what to do and what not to do. So just to inform the viewers, I've already done my functional testing before. I did some stairs, some squats to determine where my deficits may lay, may lie, may lay, may lie. Always mix those two up. I am going to dry needle my VMO, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, and also the quad tendon going right to the bone. So let us begin. <laughs> So step one, I performed some functional testing to see where my deficits uh, are, see what caused pain, any restrictions. I did some um, stair climbing and some squats, and I definitely have some inferior knee joint pain, especially during the eccentric phase or descending. What I also did, went over my bony, bony landmarks, palpations, and just to make it easier for this, I marked myself up so you can see the VMO the rectus femoris and the belly of the vastus lateralis. Let's go into our vastus lateralis, pincer grip, little poke, back. We are in. And now, what I want to avoid, the femoral triangle, adductor hiatus, and I'm going right in right in a little probing a little probing see where the tissue is most restricted not too bad we're in if anyone's a matrix fan tell me the scene we're in all right i'm going to the rectus femoris to the belly again i use some marker for some demarcation Right in the belly, little pinch. Yeah, got something right there. Woo, woo, woo. Got a little twitch. And that's what we like, right? Twitches are good. Snitches are bad. Snitches get stitches. All right, we're going into the VMO. I'm gonna go right into the belly of the VMO. Little point, little stick, and we go in. Now here's what I caught just in my own my own um self screening. I should have pinced or pincer gripped, pincer gripped the muscle first. That's one mistake. And I also don't like the angle. This should be more perpendicular to the VMO, but I'm going to come out a little bit, come back in. I'm going to probe, scope, checking for tissue density. Now I am going into the um, tendon periosteum, so the tendon bone junction. I know where the patella tendon is because I did my palpation earlier. I should have drawn this in just for teaching purposes, but here's my little bony landmark, inferior pole of the patella. So tibial tuberosity, inferior pole of the patella, there's the tendon. I'm going to go like a finger's breadth to the side laterally and medially. We're going to do the patella tendon, or better, more specifically with the patella tendon where it joins into the, uh, meets the bone, so the uh, periosteum, so the tendon bone junction. I know my bony landmark here, my tibial tuberosity, inferior pole of my patella, there's the patella tendon. I'm Usually I do one medially, medially and laterally just because the camera angle is here. I'm going laterally, da-da, little, stick 
And for this one, I'm going right through tendon, right until I hit bone. And as my instructor says, it'll feel like marble. So what do we have? We have one rectus femoris, vast lateralis, VMO, lateral patella tendon. And afterwards, hey, I'm back. Hi. Afterwards, after again, 10, 15 minutes, I'll retest. I'll do some squats, some stairs to see if there was any specific change. And this is not gonna be the only treatment if I was treating myself or another client. There may be some rock taping after this, some body works, manual therapy, and then definitely some exercises to promote healing and to supplement what we're doing here to, to maintain it. All right, heal, move, needle, evolve.